It's midnight. Do you know where your child's toy is? Well, it's being hacked right now on my desk. Yeah. So it's a, a special broadcast of Desk of Lady Ada where we're doing some baby toy hacking because the baby is asleep, I think. Yeah. Uh, so Mr. Lady Ada, want to give a little recap? Cause... Yeah. So this is the toy. It's Baby Einstein, uh, Take a Long Tune thing, I think it's called. Uh, here's uh, some human babies. We did a teardown. Of, yeah. Uh, we're calling these take aparts. And Lady Ada went through like how it works, all the things that we're doing. I talked about some of the songs we want to put on it. A lot of people got back to us or posted up on social. And they're like, this is great. I want to put my own songs. I want to be able to do all sorts of things. I wanted to do this, but, you know, I got too busy when I was raising my kid. Thanks for doing this. Um, yay, open source and all that. So you asked me to do something. Yes, I said, could you please, well, we took it apart. And I said, please scan the PCB. I scanned it. Thank you for scanning it. Uh, I scan. Thank you for giving me the scan. So you gave me a scan. Yeah. Uh, you think so you have a uh, Epson uh, scanner. You can also use a camera as long as you yeah. can get it, you know, perfectly square. Or you can you can then square it later, but um, and then you know measure it um, with calipers and then you know kind of cross correlate to to twist it until you get exactly a flat image. Because basically, what you want to do is get that image so you can import it into the pcb software to you know trace out where the whole slots are because it's an unusual shape it's not a rectangle or like a circle or a square or whatever it's got like all these funky cutouts um you know and and they want to make the pcb as small as possible and it's another thing it doesn't have to be as small as the pcb is so let's maybe go to um you're showing the scan let's go to the computer and i'll show the scan images so um this is the scan oh sorry it's not the scan this is the scan you gave me yeah. um and it's uh oh do you want me to change this to 720 dpi no okay uh so this is a scan you gave me and it's very nice um and it's full color and i was kind of like oh like should i and i i rotated it just to make it like more square and i was like well should i like trace it and then import it and then i was it's kind of really lazy and what i did is i just opened it in um you know, I kind of tw tweaked, I deleted the background in image ready so that it wasn't, you know, didn't get confusing. So like, um, this cut out here and the slots here, because there were some shadows that made it like a little confusing. So I just deleted all that background. Uh, and then I just kind of, um, increased the contrast. And then I actually, um, just converted it to, uh, I tried 16 bit color and that was taking too long to import. So I just converted to monochrome. Um, and this is, you know, good enough, right? You just need to know kind of where the, um, solder points are, speaker solder points, the holes, and then, you know, the outline of the, um, of the shape. And then I measured it and it's like four millimeter, sorry, four centimeters by, uh, I think seven centimeters, almost exactly. And so I just made this 400 pixels by 700 pixels and it was pretty much, you know, exactly, um, right. Cause it was squared. And then what I did is I imported it using in Eagle CAD, there's the import BMP tool. I'm not going to run it right now, but basically you can select a bitmap and then import it and it'll import into whatever layer you want. So I said import it into layer 200. And so you can actually see it like this is, you know, it's, it's very low res. Um, you can see the, um, even the little markings, the capacitors, resistors. And then once I had this, I was like, okay, now I can trace it out. So I traced out the dimension and I got these little tabs here. This is the ground and power. You can kind of see it says VCC and VSS and it's a little locator tab. Um, and then you'll see that the PCB actually kind of does this little necking thing. It like necks in and um, necks out here. And there's no real reason for that. Like looking at the PCB, they just, I don't know why they, they did that. Um, I don't think it's for like make any mechanical reason. Um, so I just made it like square. I squared it up, which gave me a little bit more room that I actually needed. And you can even go out a little bit more. Let me I'll just, maybe I'll show yeah, you. They had a different injection mold in the past and they needed. Yeah, you'd, like there's, or it could be it, the yeah. PCBs used in two right. toys, you know, who knows? So go to the open. By the way, can you show the original? So we have, yeah. a, we have a spare. Spare. Um, and so can you just show what it does? Okay. Oh, um, yeah. This is going to cause some parents to like have some flashbacks. 
Um, yeah, so it so just like has this little, like three LEDs. Super cute, but it needs to play Joy Division and Tori Amos and Prince and The Cure and stuff like that. Well, I think that's very fascinating is like, you know, it has this whole window, but there's only three LEDs and they're like in this corner. Yeah. Um, we'll be able to do cool stuff with it. Okay, so okay. show the uh, the innards. All right, so, so on the innards, uh, so you can see this kind of like funky oh, yeah. shaped PCB. Yeah, maybe, maybe the, in the past they... Um, well, there might be a reason. Like, you, you, a reason. you know what? We'll find out. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it... Maybe it, like, tiles perfectly or something. I don't know. Anyways, so what I did is I just brought this line down. And you can even bring... I mean, you do have to avoid these bosses here. These are used to um, secure this part. So, you know, as long as you don't bump into any of these holes, you can extend it. Which I actually needed because I needed a little bit more space. Um, so back to the... You know, and then I can I can go down quite a bit here if I need more space yeah. on here. All right, so let's go to the um, computer again. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to hide that layer. So, you know, I'm, I'm clearly not done. I'm still working on it. I mean, I just, you know, started kind of putting things together. So the next thing is, and we chatted about this on um, the last desk of 888, is I have to decide, like, what chipset do I want? So the chip inside of here is a ROM... 8051 or Z80 or something like you're never going to be able to reprogram it. It's it's completely like burned in at the factory. So I want to put in a microcontroller and there's a couple of debates that, you know, Phil and I had, which is one, um, I wanted to make it kind of unbreakable. So ideally something with a ROM bootloader so that no matter what, or, you know, even if people want to build this on their own, you don't need a separate programmer because you don't need that anymore these days. A lot of chips have built in ROM bootloaders, the ESP32s, and the RP2040s and the STM32s and M7 chips, a lot of you know, a lot of chips and LPCs, they have built-in ROM bootloaders, whereas um, the SAMD21 and 51 don't. And I can't get those chips anyways. So then it was kind of like, do I want the RP2040 or an ESP32? Those are the two chip families that like you can get very easily right now because um, we're still dealing with this chip shortage. And the price is, is fairly affordable. And they actually are both you know, fairly low power. Um, the ESP32 series especially could go to very low power modes, which could be handy because maybe like the button, you know, if you forget to turn it off, it um, you don't want it to like drain the batteries because it runs off of a uh, AA batteries or not. You can have rechargeables, but you have to pull them out and you need a screwdriver to pull them out. So like ideally, you know, it runs for a long time, even if it's left on by accident. And so we actually sort of chatted and it's like, well, you can either have an RP2040, which is definitely going to be able to play audio clips and has lots of pins and is, you know, runs at three volts and is otherwise really good. Um, but you to reprogram it, you would need to open up the case because um, there's no USB slot available. And I don't want to have to like drill holes or like cut holes in the case for people to use this. So if it's using USB like RP2040, you'll have to open it up to put in new songs which maybe is okay, um, but I also thought it'd be kind of cool if we used a Wi-Fi chip like the ESP32 series because we have really good CircuitPython support and we have PyLeap. And so like you could, you know, with Wi-Fi, you could reprogram it wirelessly or you could upload files wirelessly, which I thought was kind of neat. And then we'd have an SD card slot on the inside. So if you don't want to have the Wi-Fi on, you don't have to. Like if you never associate it with an access point, it just will never use the Wi-Fi. And then you just use the SD card um, for songs. So I thought we'd we thought we'd start with that. Also, the ESP32 S2 is again fairly inaccessible. I'm sorry, inexpensive. It's accessible. It's available. Um, and you know you can have a, a UF2 bootloader where it's it's you know drag and drop compatible. So um, the C3 was you know another possibility, but the C3 I feel like is still it's still kind of early for that chipset and. Um, Frankly, I don't know if we have an MP3 decoder for Risk V, whereas I know that there is one for the 10 silica core. So, um, all right, so back to the um, computer. Uh, sorry, yeah, we are at the computer. So, um, so this is the layout I've got, and so I'm using the ESP32 S2 module. I'm not using the S3 mostly just for pricing. I don't think I need the power of the S3. I don't think I want Bluetooth. I don't see a lot of benefit for Bluetooth when you can just use Wi-Fi. Um, and one of the things we thought would be neat is, you know, you could have it be a little podcast player, like you could, we could connect to the internet and get 
audio and download it and play it so you could have like songs of the day yeah kind of like a neat like a neat little dev system get your infant started on joe rogan as fast as possible that's that's right he's <laughs> gotta they've gotta get on trt um, okay so next up let's teething uh yeah test uh yeah it's teething. replacement therapy yes um uh, okay so we've got this uh outline it's all good and so here's all the little chunks so we've got, I basically took a Feather ESP32 S2 and I kind of gutted it. And then I had to make a couple decisions. And one of them, the decisions I actually made was, um, so this is an un, un, unreleased guide. So this is JP's uh, CNC. Yeah, bri- this CNC. Is this yeah, you'll see tomorrow. It's, it's going to be live really soon. Um, and so I kind of started, this was like a month ago. I was like, hey, can you grab one of these CNCs and like, because we, you know, we got a gift one gifted and um, it's like, here's a cow or like here's a sheep and i'm like there's no sheep in manhattan well i need i need this baby to know like here's a taxi um or you know that's a delivery a bell yeah, or a train like, or the ice cream um truck yeah um, there's a lot of things that uh, a modern baby needs uh probably not going to run into hippos as much as uh barking dogs and how to handle um the train can you know, the train guy bread yeah it's a rat um so i love this art this art is by uh brian uh Kiss- kissinger i hopefully i pronounced it right or kissinger um so it'll be released tomorrow but uh you know as um jp was building it we actually learned a lot because he's like i was like can you try this with the power supply try that it turns out like you really do want to for at least the rp2040 you really want to have one of our little uh tps t- uh boost converter chips and um because the batteries that people can put in might be rechargeables which means you're going to get only 2.5 volts so it's like well you know theoretically the rp2040 can run 2.5 volts yeah but the i2s amplifier like really was didn't sound so good at 2.5 it really wants to have a higher voltage uh, in this case they're boosting up to 5 volts and then regulating it down to 3. I'm not sure we're going to do that um but i did uh want to add the tps 61023 so one thing that's funny is this is a like total overkill it's like a two amp output uh sorry one amp output and there's no you know i don't think we'd use one amp because the speaker is like only uh you know half a watt or quarter watt but you know this chip is actually really inexpensive the tps 61023 is only 20 cents whatever in quantity and so it's actually even though it's a total overkill because we stock it i'm used to it i have you know i know that it works um that's the uh power supply we're using so this is the boost converter so i'm pretty sure i'm just going to boost to 3.3 volts i think that'll be fine and then um i'm I'm not done here i'm still working on it but i added a micro sd card slot i'm going to wire up there's one neopixel but i'm actually going to have i think six on the front of the um like the display on the player because i think that could make like for cool effects i think like six pixels three by two maybe you can go to the overhead and we'll we'll show it so this is where the screen goes and you can see the the bosses that hold it in place um so i'd have to bring the pcb out a little bit but instead of just having like three like one red one green one blue led it would be like one two three one two three so i think i'll have six because i like cool and maybe seven maybe i'll have one up here too um and they'll also be used for like you know a state of of the of the wi-fi and stuff yeah and we can have it do things like tell the time and you know we could put a bunch of wave files on there that'll be like the time is or you can have it like you're you know hi baby you're 50 days old you know, yeah yeah like, give me like some fun a fun project yeah to, we're to, just making the platform yeah so people could do this and that's circuit python makes this really easy like audio projects are really easy. yeah you can't really do this with anything else no arduino i mean you could do it with arduino or platform io but I want to make it, you know, really easy for people. I don't think. Uh, you know what? I will throw down the uh, challenge because it'd be great to have multiple versions of this, like cool, uh, coded up in whatever. Do Rust, do Arduino, but I, but I really. Think, yeah, totally. Yeah, Go for but it. but I but I really think the the whole idea of this being so easy, you just drag and drop files. That's really hard to do on, I think, any other embedded. Uh, platform language whatever anyways yeah and then for the audio output we're going to use the i2s 
uh, the Max 98357. Um, the last great search, we actually found another good alternative, but I happen to have a lot of these in stock because uh, we bought like a year's worth because there's a sil uh, silicon shortage. And so I'm, you know, even though there's there might be more fancy amplifiers, I don't need all those fancy things. Uh, this one's good. And then I can just wire this up to the I2, to uh, any pins because ESP32 can use any pins for I2S. And then you can use any pins for SPI for the SD card. So it's actually kind of nice. It's like, I still have these pin names left over from the feather. Um, oh, sorry, forgot to say go to the computer. Um, this is the um, Max 98 357 audio amplifier. Um, and then this is gonna be hooked up to the ESP32 S2 module here, which still has the feather pin numbers, um, but we'll, I'll just I'll just arrange them to use whatever and then there's that native USB-C, which is great. And that'll kind of, you know, if you really have to, and then you always put, you will probably, you know, if you don't put an SD card, we'll just store, you can store like fairly small, but not like, you know, maybe like a minute or two of audio on the built-in um, memory. But if you have an SD card, of course you can have the long, you know, as long as you want. And um, there is an MP3 decoder for the ESP32 10 silica core, I think it'll be able to run on the S2. We have to go look into it, but there's definitely wave playback and we have wave playback working. I'm almost positive um, because we usually, that's like one of the first things we get working and it's probably fast enough. You know, you'll just initialize the SD at like, you know, 60 megahertz, read it off and blast audio onto the max 98. And then you'll just have to generate wave files. We have tutorials on how to do that. So there's still a couple pieces going together. There's also going to be um, a STEM IQT port if you want to connect sensors, you know, you want to have it like motion activated or um, maybe you can like read the air quality and I'll tell you the air quality, you know, whatever you want to do, you can like hack this, hack this even more. But wanted to start with like just the basics, the little audio platform um, to get this going. And then if the S2 turns out to be not powerful enough, the good news is the ESP32 S3 is the module is pinout compatible. So you just swap it in i don't have to change any pans or any you know it's it's just the code that gets updated so the next thing i have to do is route this board out and get prototypes and make the prototypes and then just see if i can just start streaming audio and make sure it fits inside um i have to make the ports for the the, the slide switches so the the slide switch is off low volume and high volume and um the button is going to be the boot zero button too so if you hold it down while resetting it'll enter into like the bootloader so that way you can um if you're using usb you can bootload it manually so yeah. i think oops, oops well, we'll use what? <laughs> um yeah sorry about that that's okay okay so that's my that's my part two so part three um uh, hopefully by this weekend is laying out all the parts and then i'll probably cut it out you know i'll print it out on the printer at work cut it out and just make sure that it all fits like kind of like put the pieces down to make sure because i'm kind of fitting to an enclosure that already exists i want to make sure that i'm not bumping into anything and then ordering those pcbs okay a lot. all right well keep staying tuned we will keep sneaking around at night while the baby's sleep later <laughs>